Welcome, this is the Tennessee end of course practice test number three for algebra one. Question number 48. Uh, which ordered pair represents the solution for this system of equations? Now, if you've talked about systems of equations in your class, there's like tons of ways to do this problem. And I'm going to show you as many of them as I can think of. Specifically, I'm going to talk to you about um, graphing. I'm going to talk to you about elimination. I'm going to talk to you about substitution. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how to get it if you really still don't know, which is another form of, a form of substitution, not really as uh, mathematically sound. Now, the first thing I'm going to try to do is graph, because the systems of equations question the solution itself represents the points where the two lines would intersect, so where they kind of touch in that one moment in time. So I'm going to put everything into slope-intercept form. The reason I want everything in slope-intercept form is because in my calculator I can graph slope-intercept and you'll probably have one with you, plus it's easy to graph by hand as well, in case you don't have a calculator. So I'm going to add 5x, or 0.5x I should say. The reason I want to add 0.5x is because the relationship, I'm trying to get y by itself obviously, uh, in order, the relationship here is an add-subtract one. This says minus, it really means negative, but I'm going to treat it as a minus, so I'm going to add both sides. So one of my setups is y equals 0.5x plus 25. So I'm going to write that right up here. And then I'm going to sort of erase this. The other one, all I'm going to do, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Just going to try to get y by itself. The relationships between the numbers are a little different, so it will change the overall look of the answer a smidge. So anyway, here I have the point, uh, or 1x being add subtract related to this. It's actually a subtraction right now. So this is plus x. To eliminate it, I need to do minus x. So we end up with negative 1x plus 10. Now, 0.5 means 1 half. So in a second, I'm going to get rid of times 1 half by dividing. Don't freak out when you divide if you don't already know, but if you divide by a fraction, the number actually multiplies, you know, because you just flip it over and multiply it, so I'd be multiplying by 2, essentially. So when I do negative 1 divided by negative 0.5, what I end up getting is 2. I guess I should show this step out. 2x. Um, and then I do 10 divided by negative 0.5, and I get minus 20. So these are my two Uh, graphs that I need to graph, so I'm going to bring up my calculator now. This might be one of those times when you actually have to change the window around a little bit to make it look nice. So I'm going to go into the window and my, uh, well it helps if you turn it on, doesn't it? I'm going to go into my window and change my x max and x min to negative 20 and positive 20, and I'm going to do the same thing to my y max and y min, because I want to be able to see the whole graph, or most of it anyway. Probably on the y I should do 30, but I'm not going to, so it is what it is. Now, I can graph both of these now, so 0.5x plus 25. That's the reason why I should probably have gone to 30. 2x minus 20. So I'm going to graph these two, and I'm actually going to look for an intersection point, and it's probably way over in the corner somewhere. As you can see, the answer choices are uh, some of them go all the way up to 50, so let's fiddle with the window to where we get 50. And then see if we can see that intersection point. Now, there's a bunch of ways I can find that intersection point. One of them is to go into the table and just look for uh, the x values that I'm given, and I should it's obviously positive. So if I go into the table, most graphing calculators will allow this option, and I'll show you the one that the T84 Plus can do. So what I'm looking for is an x value that has the same matching y values, because that means at x, both graphs happen to hit that y at the same time. I'm going to sort of use the information I was given in the problem and see if 30 x gives me a point of intersection. And there it is. You can see 30 and 40 are my point of intersection, so D would be an answer I could use. Also, if I you have a calculator that does uh, intersection points, I could hit intersect here, and then I need to, you know, it says first curve, it means the first line, and then the second one, and then it sort of gives you the option, 
to guess. What, why they would do that is if you have a curvy line, it might intersect twice. It wants to know which one you're looking for. So 30 and 40. So that's graphing. Uh, from here, I can go in and look at elimination. Now, elimination, I want to get rid of either my x term or my y term, and then work from there. Well, I know that this is 1 half, so I'm actually going to get rid of that 1 half by multiplying by 2. I have to multiply everything by 2, though, so uh, 2 times negative 0.5 is negative 1. 2 times y is 2y, and 2 times 25 is 50. So now I have, as you can see, plus 1 up here and minus 1 down here, so those end up canceling out. Uh, then I want to do 2 minus 0.5, so 1.5, and then 50 plus 40 uh, gives me, uh, 50 plus 10, I'm sorry, gives me 60. 40, what was that? Now I just need to solve it by dividing both sides, or by 1.5, because this is y. 60 divided by 1.5 is 40, so my y value is 40. Now that I have my y value to get my x, all I need to do is plug it in my y value into one of the equations. I'm going to choose the bottom one. It doesn't matter which, by the way. Draw my line. 0.5 times 40 is 20. To get rid of minus 20, I'm going to add 20. So my x is equal to 30. So that's method 2. That would be elimination. Now we'll do method 3. Uh, to do method 3, what I'm going to do is substitution. So substitution involves me uh, putting one of these in terms of one of the variables. So what I'm going to do is take the top one and put y by itself. So I'm going to do plus 0.5x. y is equal to 0.5x plus 25, which essentially means any time I write the letter y in, a, in an equation, I could just write it as 0.5x plus 25 if I wanted to. So I'm going to go into this one here, the bottom one, and I'm going to write x minus 0.5, and instead of writing y, I'm going to write 0.5x plus 25. Once again, I solve it. So negative 0.25x, or negative 1 fourth, plus, or sorry, minus 12.5 equals 10. Here's my x. Now I need to combine my x's together, so I end up getting 0.75x minus 12.5 equals 10. Add 12.5 to both sides. 0.75x, uh, 22.5 here, divided by 0.75. Sorry about my lousy handwriting on this one. So I do 22.5 divided by 0.75, end up getting an x value of 30. To get my y value, I simply go back in and plug it into one of them. I'm going to plug it into the bottom one. might want to plug it into the top one, whichever one you feel like in your heart is the one you want to do. It doesn't really matter. Um, so subtract 30 from both sides. I end up with negative 20 here. I divide by negative 0.5. So my y value is 40. So I get 30 and 40 again. That's the third way. The fourth way, uh, there is one more way that's sort of uh, lame-ish. I'm not going to lie, but you can still do it you can actually plug in your answer choices into x and y and just see if they make truth statements. So negative 0.5x plus y equals 25. In order to that to be true or for me to have a solution there, that would mean that I would have an x and a y value that makes the statement work. So I'm going to go over and see if I can get my calculator up again. Now in the first one, I'm going to plug in the 30 and 40 that we suspected to be true. Negative 0.5, and instead of x there, I'm just going to pick the 30. And then I'd close it, and then plus the y value in this setup is 40, so close that, equals, and then I hit enter, sorry, I don't hit equals, 
hit enter, and it gives me 25. And that's exactly what it's supposed to give me. When I put those in there, it should give me 25. It's the answer. Uh, same thing on the other side. Uh, my x is 30 minus 0.5 times my y, which is 40, and it gives me 10. Now, if I tried one of the other ones, let's just do the letter C really quickly with the second one because it's easier to type. Um, my x value here would be 12 minus 0.5, and my y value, of course, would be 4. So it should equal 10, and it does equal 10. So that's a step in you know some direction. So let's make sure the other one works. Negative 0.5, and we're going to close that off to make it 12 plus my y value of 4 equals negative 2, but it's supposed to equal 25, right? So that can't be the right answer. So my, it has to work for both. Occasionally it will work for one of them, depending on how you sort of, you know, tie it in there. Like if you type it in a different way, sometimes it gives you, uh, like if you, the biggest thing that I would say is don't use negative when you could do minus. I'm sorry. I kind of lost my brain there for a second. But as you can see, that one works, but the other one doesn't. So make sure both of them work. That method is another way to do it. So this one's kind of long, I know, but the reality is there's a bunch of different ways to do it. You could pick the one you feel the most comfortable with and skip through all the other ones, and there you go. So good luck.